Hi everyone, welcome to Dave's Bonsai. On today's episode, the fall chill is in the air. It's time to get some trees into their winter home. I'm in the cabin cold frame. The windows have been on for a while. The door has been off because we've had such glorious weather and no trees are in here. Today I walked in here and checked everything out. The fan is blown right now. The heater is plugged in. And uh, if we turn the thermostat regulation down cold enough, it kicks on. So we can go ahead and test it. And there it goes on. Nice. And there. It goes back off because it's warm enough in here. The Go V says 39 degrees. Yep, so it's not going to go on until it's at 35 to 40 range. And everything's set up in here, okay? We stained this uh, about a month or so ago. Everything's ready. I've got some water set up here. We've got a lot of trees to come in here. Not going to put them in today, but in the coming days, as we hit lows now consistently into the 20s in the 7 to 10 day forecast, slowly but surely, we're going to have to get this... Uh, you know, Tetris situation figured out where the trees are going to go so I can have good access to them for watering and they'll have a good winter home. Now I have some trees that are going to go into the garage cold frame today, so let's take you right to that. I've gone ahead and sprayed down the trees with a little bit of neem oil, a soap and water mixture uh, to get rid of any possible remaining bugs. We hit a low of about 33 degrees this morning, so most of those critters are probably uh, seeking protection. Uh, but we gave them a quick spray and sprayed them down with a hose so everything's all clean, washed out, and ready to go in the cold frame. So we've got the great big old trident maple here that we cut down with just a couple branches. There's still a few leaves on there. Um, I'm going to put that one in probably last uh, tomorrow. <clears throat> but these are all uh, defoliated, all the leaves except for the very tips up here. We'll, we'll cut those off. And uh, these are all ready to go in the cold frame. So I've got a couple of my Japanese maples right here, three of them to be exact, and then we have back here my Chinese elm. And so I'll put this in the cold frame as well. And so let's go find a place where they can hunker in for the winter. In the garage cold frame, I've only put one tree. A friend of mine, Brian from MBS, is going to have me store his juniper here uh, in the cold frame for the winter. And here are the trees that were just out back. Now all the, uh, well two of the Japanese maples are all fine. We're letting this one be a runner and grow next year. These right here, I don't, I'm not overly concerned about any particular runner on those. So just to cut these down to size a little bit more, I'm gonna go ahead and just trim those right there. And this one has a weird direction on it, so let's get rid of that one. So just, just a little bit of final uh, pruning on the Japanese maples. And they're going to sit here. Now, I don't know what trees will be in this cold frame quite yet for uh, total uh, trees and positioning. We have plenty of room right now. We've got a, down here all my watering containers down here. There's all my uh, rainwater collected here. I've got the bottom shelf if I need it, this middle shelf here. And this last one here, though, that I wanted to just uh, go ahead and do a little bit of trimming on is the Chinese elm. We are at the point in fall where the temperatures are finally back to average. We hit 79 in uh, Wilmer, Minnesota, just on the 2nd of November, 79 degrees. We were at 75, we broke a record for the warmest uh, November day. Now these Chinese elms will come back pretty, uh, pretty nicely and, and put out a lot of growth, just like my Siberian elms. And um, a lot of times they'll put out new shoots though on the old wood, so a lot of good back budding features on here. So I've got a lot of scraggly uh, ramification, if you will, but this tree's still young and we want to see what we're going to develop down here. So again, on all these branches up here, um, I'm just not going to be worried about cutting these back pretty good so we can set this thing up next year for uh, some new growth. So just a couple of quick little... Uh, prunes here and again this is going to be a nice fast grower uh, pushes out a lot of new growth um, we got a branch growing inside we don't like we'll get rid of that one and so I'm not worried about the style so much of this right now but we're just making this shorter uh, for next year's growth so this Chinese elm is one that's now leaning on the rock not root over rock and uh, we'll get this nice and short compact and it'll be ready for next year so Nothing design right rated. It's really going to make it just nice and cozy here in the, in the cold frame. So this one can sit right here. 
not bother the maple behind it. This one I can actually reposition, and these will probably be repositioned re re more than once. So now we have four trees all right here, my maples and my elms. I also have my uh, Hanoki cypress here that I picked up at Otten Brothers. Uh, grew really well this fall, left in this little container. We're going to protect that in the cold frame as well. We can just tuck this over here. Um, and so that's just five trees. I can probably fit five more here, uh, two, or, two, or, two more here next to my buddy Brian's, some over here. And then that might be it for this cold frame, and then we're going to have a whole bunch in the cabin cold frame. But this is the first set of trees. I had washed this out in an earlier episode, so this is all clean and ready to go. The fans are plugged in. I will now plug in the heater to make sure if it does get low and we don't uh, get into those low, low temperatures too fast. So I'm going to turn up the thermostat regulated heat source here. See if it clicks on. All right, it did click on. So we have the heat source down here. So we're going to put it back to about 40, just under 40 degrees. And our thermometers, our Gobi thermometers, we're at 47 here, up on top, which is super nice. And down at the bottom, we're at 47 as well. So right now, this is very evenly distributed. The more the heat goes on, we're going to have hotter up here and uh, cooler down there in the future, but we'll monitor that very, very closely. So, I'm going to make sure that this heater does go off if I make it warm enough. And there it goes off. So it's too warm for it to run right now because I put it down to 20. So if I warm it up again to about 40 degrees, It'll click on when it starts to dip below 40 degrees. And then I have the light switch up here. If I want lights, I'm going to put lights on. But I'm going to keep my lights off in the cold frame this year. This will be for work light purposes. I didn't see a great amount of benefit in the first year of having lights here. And the debate is still out there whether you need any lights in the dormancy period because, well, it's pretty dark out, right? Um, so we're going to maybe do some lights maybe in uh, the February-March time frame when things do start to wake up. But over uh, uh, the rest of November, December, and January, we're just going to leave the lights on, off until we need to uh, maybe see what we're doing, check the soil for water uh, moisture levels, as so we can water our trees. So the first batch of trees are now tucked away into the cold frame. And in the coming week, as we get now lows into the 20s, more and more trees will come in here, and we'll just do them step by step. Now with the door on, inside the cabin cold frame will be nice and regulated. The heat probably won't go off until maybe tonight, into tomorrow morning, or this coming week when we have temps that are going to hit those uh, mid, uh, maybe even lower 20s. So everything in there, regulation, the key, we don't want the high highs or the low lows. The Japanese maple here, we'll let it sit out here tomorrow. There's going to be some sun and 50 degrees. You know, one more day won't hurt it, but uh, I'll probably put it in on Sunday. Uh, maybe Monday or Tuesday, and it'll be in here for the rest of the season. And then we'll start taking some of those uh, um, other uh, trees from the uh, garden and get them in here one by one. So I got the Chinese, or rather the Japanese maples and that elm tree into the cabin cold frame. And upon walking around my yard, I remembered there was a couple smaller trees that I had to take care of as well. So let's check into that. I'm back out at the temporary workbench site. This is going to go in the garage at some point. This came out of the plant room. It's the bare exposed wood that could get more mold on it, so we're trying to keep the house healthier. So here's my little $50 challenge tree, the little uh, cumulus uh, puff tree. Um, and that uh, is gonna go into the cold frame because of its size. And uh, we'll put that in there next. I'm just gonna leave it alone right there. I don't know if I'll trim any of that or not today. Um, and then I have these two uh, cuttings for my Shimpaku junipers. And I have a little bit of copper wire for this guy. And we're going to give it a little bit of a young whip twist around, right? It's super young. We're going to be able to manipulate this guy and move it around. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a little, a little twirl around the tree here. And we don't have as good of an anchor point, so I have to be kind of careful here with this initial wrap around there we go. I'm gonna try to get in between some of these branches right here so this is just a two-year cutting 
from a Shimpaku juniper. Um, I kept it alive. We got some roots on there. We saw it earlier in the year. And so we're going to go ahead and give this a little bit of a bend. And then we're going to bend it this way. And then we're going to bring it around this way. And so now I have just a little bit of a curve in this tree. And a little bit of twist action. And uh, just so it's not a stick tree, straight tree. And so now that one's ready to go in the cold frame. Just a little bit of uh, help in making this thing twist around. So two down. And this one's super skinny and little. I got, uh, I think this copper wire would be a little too stiff. I can move this aluminum a little bit better, although it's thicker. I don't know, this will be a horse apiece, I think. Kind of tricky when you have very little tree, not a lot of roots established. But I do have roots in here. I saw these earlier in the year, so I know there's roots there. We're trying to preserve as much of the structure of the tree as we can with these young new growths. And then we can put this top part in nice and loose. And there we have just a little bit of wire there to just give it a little bit of momentum. Again, one way versus the other. There. So with the foliage, it's a little hard to see. Now this is not a, a wire job for a show, but now this created this curve this way and up kind of this way. This branch could become a primary branch, you know, 10 years from now. <laughs> These are little whips, but just giving it a little bit of movement to see what happens and we'll let this thing just shoot up and grow next year. So we've got some movement in those. They can go in the cold frame. It has started to mist outside on this cool fall day. Temperatures are around normal for today. We're getting up into the 40s. A lot different than the 70s. I have two trees left that are in pots that for some reason or another the tree did not make it. So rather than going into spring and having this one full of just soil and a dead tree, let's get it out of here so this pot can be cleaned up and used in the spring. So we'd rather do this now than later. So I'll give that a good wash outside because the hose is still hooked up for today and tomorrow and then the hose goes away. And this is just a dead tree that uh, will res preserve some of the uh, some of the bonsai soil, and that's all there is to it. That's tree number one. And then the sad one right here is the blue arrow juniper. So this blue arrow juniper um, has been another popular uh, viewing uh, piece of my YouTube channel. It's like fifth in line for the most watched, and I had it in too small of a pot at first. I think that was part of the problem and I didn't get a lot of good growth up, for, up front, but then it slowly recuperated, and then all of a sudden this year, I don't know if some fungus hit it or what, but it completely just bit the dust. So it had three trunks, I cut it down to two. It had this pretty obnoxious scar in the back that's healing a little rough, but when you turned it around, um, that was a little bit easier to look at. I would've gotten rid of this branch if I had any more back budding. But this one also, it is time to retire. So we're gonna have to go ahead and snip these wires in back and get rid of this one as well. Because then this great big pot, it's a nice ceramic pot. We can use for a tree in the springtime. So we'll get rid of some of these wires, and we'll recycle those. And though it had a pretty decent 360 degree uh, root base down here, a little weak on this one side, it just didn't make it. So, not sure why. We live and we learn, and we practice and we keep practicing. And there's another nice big pot, big, big sturdy uh, ceramic pot that we can use for a really nice tree next year. update today is the larch trees, the ones that I planted way earlier this spring as little sticks, 
and uh, most of the large survived the entire year. I did uh, uh, sell a lot of the trees to many of the uh, new members that were looking for a new tree to work on. And they're still in their gold color, still some green left. These will be shedding most of these, le these uh, uh, needles here in the next week or so. So the larch is looking pretty good. Let's show you the larch forest. So behind Minnesota forest number two, we've got the larch forest back there with the one maple tree in the middle. And there's still a little bit of color on that maple tree. Uh, kind of pretty leaves there and they're hanging on tight. But then we've got the larches. These are the ones collected from the bogs in upper uh, Minnesota, northern Minnesota. Real long and more, more like old growth style. And then this was the one from the uh, nursery that has kind of more of a full tree. But they're looking nice and pretty. We got the yellows, we've got the reds, got the deep burgundies. So the large forest, looking kind of nice. We're gonna add more trees to that forest in the spring, I can't wait. My last update for today is one of my barberry bushes. So this barberry has a lot of gnarly triple trunk, big old trunk wood there, but we have uh, one of them still alive, producing some uh, neat colors here in the fall. And we're hoping this thing really bushes out in year number three next year. So I love the fall colors, some super yellowy green stuff there on the tips and some oranges. A lot of colors in this little barberry. Can't wait till next year as well. Fun stuff to look forward to. And since we're out here in the little mist, let's show you the slab planting of the white paper birch. We have the maples all de-leafed and trimmed up. We cut off a little bit of the twigs on the birch. They're gonna be a lot more white next spring, I think next year. Those two on the right, that one in the back left. But the forest and the slab, that's gonna go in the house with the help of Toby in the next seven to 10 days. There's still some mist coming down out here on this gray fall day. It's beautiful though. You get that nice little coating of the bark on the trees, uh, turn all dark. And if there's any color left on the trees, I love how that makes that color pop. But you know what? I have to stop doing bonsai now and I have to go back to my household chores. Yeah, I gotta make my way over to the compost site and get rid of some uh, yard waste that we've been cleaning up the last couple of days and week or so. And uh, yeah, the chores are a calling. So that'll do it for now. Hey, take care of you, take care of your bonsai, and we're gonna see you real soon on the next one.